Welcome to another episode of Data Strategy Unraveled. I'm your host, Kendra Reed, Principal Data and GNAI Strategy Specialist here at AWS. And now today we have a really special episode for you because we're going to be talking about the first ever object cloud storage uh, with managed Apache iceberg tables. Um, and that is Amazon S3 tables. Um, and so to help us with this conversation, I have my friend here, Ari, from the S3 tables team to talk a little bit about what this is and how it really is a game changer. Hey, hey, Ari, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Kendra. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, before we get into, you know, the questions, how about you tell us a little about yourself, what you do at Amazon, um, and, and, and yeah, and where are you, where you calling us from, actually? Yeah. So, everyone, I'm Ari. I'm calling in from Seattle, Washington, and I'm a product manager with Amazon S3. I've been with Amazon for almost three years now, worked in S3 throughout my Amazon career, so previously looking at replication, multi-region features, and very recently, I've been working on S3 tables, which is our managed iceberg feature that we'll talk about today. Okay, cool. So yeah, you're definitely, like I always say, you're the guy we need to talk to here. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what exactly is Amazon S3 tables? Now for our viewers, if you've been watching our videos, we had a video previously around, you know, open table formats. And so we kind of teased a little bit of this out, but um, how about you tell us a little bit about what Amazon S3 tables is and how Iceberg plays into that? Of course. So before we get into S3 tables, maybe I'll give you a quick primer of open table formats and what customers are doing with it. Mm -hmm. So um, the best way to think about open table formats is you see a lot of customers uh, creating data lakes on top of Amazon S3. And a lot of that is structured data. Um, most popularly used structured data format as Parquet as a file type itself. And what open table formats do is they kind of bring a metadata layer on top of these Parquet files. Now, where this really helps is you can essentially take any SQL engine, any query engine of your choice, and then easily query these tables. You can stream a bunch of transactions into these open table format tables. You can also do some sort of time travel, and there's a bunch of other goodness that comes with it. Now, among the most popular open table formats are Apache Iceberg, Delta Lake, and Hoodie. Now, the thing to note here is while these open table formats are great to work with, a lot of our customers in S3, what we are hearing from them is, once they go in, let's say, a year, year and a half into production with these open table formats, they typically had the challenges of keeping these performant, cost effective, and also think about how to do access control on these you know, like open table format tables. So imagine you running millions of tables in your S3 storage, and now suddenly you're thinking about you know, how to think of compaction, how to think of you know, cost management, how to think of me giving access to a bunch of tables to you know, a specific teams within, within my space. So to kind of help customers with the management aspects of these iceberg tables, we launched S3 tables last reInvent. Now, if you ask me what is S3 tables, S3 tables is the simplest way for you to get started with any kind of structured data. Now, S3 tables follows the Apache iceberg open table format. And as a result of which, you can bring in any first party engines that understand iceberg. So for example, Athena or Redshift, you can bring in any third party tools as well, such as Snowflake, or you can bring any open source iceberg compatible engines like Spark, Flink, even DuckDB, with whom we've been working very closely to talk to S3 tables. So simply put, it's a very easy way for you to start with your structured data journey on S3, and we take care of all the management and access control behind the scenes for you. Yeah, yeah, and it's really key what you mentioned there, because I talk with a lot of customers and you know, one of the things that come up and say, hey, we don't wanna be vendor locked in, right? And I think the S3 table is really what you just mentioned there really opens up the aperture on the different tools that you can use with your S3 data there. Um, how about you touch on a little bit more on those key benefits that you can see from S3 tables? What are, what are some of those? Absolutely. So let me talk about these three you know, like pillars that we typically talk about when you look at S3 tables and how they help out customers. Right. So the first pillar that you absolutely want out of your data lake is performance. Now, if you look at open table formats, you know, imagine you streaming a bunch of data into these data lakes. What would happen is every minute, every five minutes, let's say there are small changes coming in into your table. Now, these land as small objects or small parquet files within your object storage that kind of gets fragmented over time. And now imagine you running a query, running a dashboard. What that means is you need to make multiple round trips to, to the storage layer and then open up a bunch of these parquet files that have accumulated and kind of then get your query results back to, the, to your users. What S3 tables does is it, it gives you a much higher request capacity out of the box. So what that really means is 
You can have multiple writers streaming data into these same tables concurrently. And you can also have multiple readers and query engines getting data out of these tables without the risk of running into capacity starvation or you know, running out of request capacity limits itself. So it really helps speed up that performance there. And the second part of this pillar also is that we do auto compaction of these tables. So what that means is you can really stream your data at any rate that you want with S3 tables, but we kind of take care of making sure that those are packed in the right way for your query engines who can then make much lesser requests onto the storage layer and then get the right chunk and the right query out of, out of your engines in a more performant way. So that's, that's the first part of it, where we really do a lot of work behind the scenes to improve the performance. Yeah, the second, no, no, go ahead. Sorry, the, um, the second pillar is around access control, where um, we now have the concept of these tables or iceberg tables as a first class AWS resource. So what that means is they come with a resource name itself and you can attach or you can hang a policy directly on these tables and then say that, hey, for a group of my users, they have read and write access to these tables versus these users only have read access to these tables. So that's kind of the second pillar around security and access control where you can really simplify it by thinking of tables and namespaces, which are group of tables, rather than having to think of you know prefixes or objects or tags and anything in the S3 world itself. Yeah, I was, the, going, I was going to say that yeah. you're really limiting or uh, reducing a lot of that burden from managing the tables as well as the security aspects there. So that's I think that's really cool there. What was that third point you're going to mention there? Yes. So the final point kind of kind of ties ties the exact thing that you mentioned, Kendra, yeah. right? Where um, if we, in addition to compaction, we also take care of snapshot management and orphan file removal, which are kind of these iceberg terms to kind of take care of your object storage so it doesn't balloon up oversize over time, right? So we basically make sure that your object is um, your object store is optimized um, in terms of your cost as well. So you can tell us that hey, I just need to keep ten snapshots of this table for thirty days, and then we make sure that we are optimizing your table according to. Um, your retention periods. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. I think that's that's really that's really big there because I remember before all of this when Delta really came out, that was one of the things, and as well as with Iceberg, you know, having to manage that yourselves, and so this really allevi alleviates a lot of that. Um, could you explain a little bit, you know, on the governance and security on the um, auditing, the audit trails, and things like that that might that comes from this also? Absolutely. So um, as I mentioned, right, like with tables, you now have the concept of um, a table itself as a resource. So what that means is you can now attach a policy, you can express a lot of your access control in terms of tables themselves. And these tables are also categorized under logical um, groups, which are called namespaces or databases commonly in the analytics world. Now, what you can do is as part of these policies, you can now say that, hey, a particular group of users have you know, certain read and write access. And the second thing that you can do going one step further above on the layer is we have a direct integration with the overall analytic services. So what that means is there's a one-click integration where you can integrate these tables directly with lake formation. And on lake formation, you get to do a lot of the fine-grained access control. You can bring in an IDP provider of your own that can kind of you know, plug in into lake formation and then have human readable resources and permissions being tied to these tables themselves. Now, on the other side, we also have CloudTrail support and trail logs for these S3 tables. And what they do is they emit trails as per, you know, per table or at a namespace level. And that way you can audit how your tables are being accessed over time. So you have a proper auditable log that gives you, you know, um, an auditability of what, what customers are querying your tables or writing in your tables at what points in time. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone knows that Amazon uh, you know, security is job zero, right? Um, and so having that ability there and integrating with late formation is really, really crucial. Um, you know, you've given us a lot of information about S3 tables. How are customers actually using this in their day-to-day? -day? So, um, so I'm actually really surprised by the different ways in which like, you know, customers are actually using Iceberg today. Uh, we've seen a wide range of use cases, you know, like, ranging from, daily transaction data where you just want to stream this daily transaction data, keep it longer term for you know, retention, for downstream queries, you might have um, you know, your machine learning engineers, data analysts want to um, you know, look at a bunch of these transaction data and understand customer behavior. There's also a bunch of IoT and other sensor data that's been streamed into these tables that we see from some of our customers. And the final 
um, you know, like pillar that I generally see with customers is keeping a log or an audit of a bunch of things that are going on across their applications, across their compute. So think of customers wanting to store telemetry logs, any other logs into Iceberg as a, as a table format itself. And what they are doing right now is we have a really simple integration with Kinesis Firehose, which understands a bunch of these streaming um, you know, sources on their end, and you can directly pipe these changes into S3 tables as, as an Iceberg format. So they just need to set up those configs, and then you know, we take care of actually transforming them into Parquet, transforming them into Iceberg, and then as we take care of the compaction, these are all optimized for your query performance. Now, this is being used across a bunch of industries. So think of financial services, retail, manufacturing, you know, I, IoT, as I already mentioned. And of this, I wanted to quickly highlight Pendulum, with whom we recently published a blog, and we'll probably drop a link in the description. Um, what they did was they previously used to run their own iceberg um, you know, setup within general purpose S3, but that came with a lot of overhead that they needed to manage on their end. So when they looked at S3 tables, they saw that how it could, you know, really improve the operational posture and also reduce their cost of maintaining these iceberg data lakes. So they very recently migrated their mission critical data sets onto S3 tables. So that's kind of some of the examples where we see customers use iceberg in, in a lot of creative ways. And we're really happy to see a lot of them start to use S3 tables as a more managed way of doing that. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll be sure to put that link in the description on uh, Pendulum and what they're doing there. Uh, but as we wrap up here, you know, if I'm a viewer, how can I get started with S3 tables? What's what's the best way to go about that? So the easiest way to uh, get started with S3 tables would be through our S3 console. So on the console itself, we have a new tab where you can now look at table buckets. And there's a one-click integration that helps you integrate with our overall analytics suite. So the way to think about this is when you go into the console, you create a table bucket. You also select the way to integrate it with the analytic services. And as soon as that's done, you then have a next step where you can go into the console itself and go to Athena, which is our managed query engine that really understands Iceberg really well. And there's a one click that will take you to Athena. There's a bunch of pre-populated you know, query like um, schemas, tables with some sample data as well that you can just try around, or you can bring your own schema, you can bring your own data directly through Athena as well. I think that's one of the easiest way to just get started with tables because it just takes a few clicks and you can play around with the entire a system interactively on the console itself. Got it. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Ari, for taking the time today to talk to us through S3 tables and how it's really changing the game when it comes to these open table formats and uh, how what we're doing with customers and how customers are leveraging it. Um, for our viewers, we'll be sure to put that link in the description of Pendulum and how they're using it, as well as um, any other blogs that might be relevant to S3 tables. You can find that in the description below. And We'll see you all again in the next episode of Data Strategy Unravel. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kendra, for having me. Thank you.